Wednesday paper? This is Wednesday, Meg. Hey, for someone serving 99 years, you're splitting hairs over a few days? <laughs> Meg, what do you want for that paper? Well, since I consider you girls family, how about two packs of cigarettes and any loose gold fillings you might have? <laughs> but my fillings aren't loose. Which brings us to Mr. Nightstick. <laughs> Look, I gotta have that paper. Well, I wouldn't do this for everyone, but I'll give you a bar of soap and one of those things you send away for that removes blackheads. Oh, oh you mean a baseball bat? <laughs> well, that's what I use to remove my husband's blackhead. <laughs> Don't any of you have some cigarettes I could borrow? Don't give in to her, Eve. She's just trying to take advantage of the fact that we're in prison and luxuries like a daily paper are impossible to come by. New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Pravda. <laughs> and for inquisitive minds, Bigfoot reveals I am Elvis's love child. I gotta have the Green Bay Bugle. Ugh, my parakeet just used it. <laughs> The Green Bay Bugle. A newspaper preferred by nine out of ten dead fish. Bonnie, help me out. Meg, if it's this important to Eve, what if we give you the soap, some mustache wax, and I'll do your hair? The combination just might work. <laughs> Deal. Here's your paper. After all, I have been thinking of playing up my natural glamour. Ah, just when we were getting used to your natural ugly. <laughs> ugly is such a harsh word, Dawn. But then again, so's cattle prod. <laughs> you know, if she was just a little taller, she could have a Napoleon complex. <laughs> Eve, since when do you keep up on world events? I don't. I'm looking for a message from Charlie. He's been on the lam for months. Oh, how cute. Your hubby sends you messages through the personals? Every year, on our anniversary. That sentimental knucklehead. Oh. Here it is. Happy anniversary, baby cakes. Love, Charlie. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? I'm fighting back the tears. <laughs> Boy, I miss him. This will be 30 anniversaries I've spent without him. Now, I don't even remember what a couple does on their anniversary. Oh, I do. I had one couple who invited me to spend the night with them on their 25th. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 30 is pearls, 25 is whore. <laughs> Shipley, you got a visitor. Me? I never have visitors. Who could it be? What if it's one of the old gang? No, we never had a gang. Well, maybe that was our mistake. <laughs> okay, Bonnie, I'm ready. Do do that hairdo that you do so well. I want to look just like Christy Brinkley. She already looks like David Brinkley. <laughs> You shrunk. So, how long's it been, Sam? Too long. It was my wedding day. You were the best man. I'm still the best man. Uh, don't open old wounds, Sam. I didn't marry you. I married Charlie. Yeah, but tell the truth. Don't you still feel something for me? Sam, you arrested me on my wedding day. I'll always feel something for you. <laughs> FBI man. I was only doing my job. Charlie's a bank robber. He was only doing his. <laughs> yeah, by the way, what do you hear from Charlie these days? Why would I hear from Charlie? Oh, rumor has it he's in the area. We believe he'll probably try to make contact with you. My Charlie's close by? Why, Charlie, why don't you just drive a stake through my heart? Eve, I'm retiring next year. You're getting out sometime soon. Charlie, on the other hand, is serving two consecutive forevers. Think about it. 
There's nothing to think about. I'll cooperate with us, Eve. You know, even if you can't cooperate with me. I know Charlie will find a way to see you. What I don't know is how or when. As I recall, you never knew how or when. <laughs> You only look ten years younger, huh? Nine? Eight. Seven? Well, somebody stop me! Go on. I'm gonna need some help here. I don't know. We're not allowed to use power tools. Girls, you gotta help me. Nothing is more important to me than seeing Charlie. Well, we'll have to use what we got. Mirrors and trick lighting. I wonder how he's gonna get in here. I bet he'll sneak in with the laundry. Oh, I hope they don't starch him. Actually, I hope they do. Okay, Eve. I think I can shave five years off you. I'm gonna need a slinky dress, a girdle, black net stockings and spike heels. Perfect. A leisure world hooker? Subtle don't pay the rent. Don't worry, Eve. Charlie's gotten older, too. You're right. Just make me look my age. How old are you? None of your business. It's a pretty modern setup, Rafferty. For a prison in the middle of a cow pasture. Well, for your information, we have over 600 women here at Bath. And with our computerized security system, we know where every woman is at any moment. Excuse me. What are you doing here? <laughs> Mr. Rafferty, I have a problem. When are you going to get the new typewriter ribbon? When are you going to learn how to type? Ooh, a Mexican standoff. <laughs> Over here. Where are you? The air duct. I'm trying to find Eve Shipley. You're Charlie. Eve's Charlie? Can I trust you? As a pledge, I'll never lie. That's the creed of Phi Beta Pi. <laughs> you must be Vicky. At your service. Vicky. What? Coffee. And you shouldn't have any more. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, did I hear you talking to somebody? Uh, oh, only the plants, sir. It encourages them to grow. Wait, bye-bye. Oh, uh, well, carry on. <laughs> Do you know where Eve Cell is? I should. I'm her cellmate. Look, I'm lost. I've been crawling around these pipes for hours. I've seen the kitchen, the visitor center, the showers, the showers, the showers. Charlie. Vicky. Coming. Listen, go back down to the visitor center. It's closed now, so no one should be there. I can get a key and a hall pass to Eve. It's been 30 years. How will I know if it's really Eve? You'll hear her heart pounding. Don't worry, I'll bring her right to you. You FBI guys know these things. Where is Jimmy Hoffa? <laughs> Here you go, sir. Here are your plants. I have to go back out and water the coffee. Are you all right? Yes, no. I mean, I have to go back down to my cell and uh, bleach my hands. <laughs> okay. I know her. <laughs> Look, let's get back to the reason I'm here. Hey, it's all been taken care of. I've got personnel posted at every point of entry. And Eve's being watched 24 hours a day by my best man, Meg Bando. <laughs> Call her off. What? It'll be easier to catch Charlie once he's inside the prison walls. 
All we have to do is keep an eye on Eve without her knowing. She'll lead us right to him. And, and then we take him dead or alive. Yeah, I prefer dead. some broken hearts at the drive-in tonight. <laughs> You're not just saying that. Hey, I'm getting turned on, and I know what you really look like. <laughs> Listen, Eve. Charlie's here. What? Charlie? Where? Shh. He's in the air ducts. I just spoke with him. My Charlie? How does he look? Dusty. <laughs> He's traveling through the air ducts on the way to the visitor center to meet you. Oh, my God. Right now? He should be there any minute. Unless someone cranks up the heat. I've got to go to him. Everybody freeze! Meg! <laughs> Meg, at least it covers up your point. <laughs> Meg, you had your hair done first, and it looks so much better on you. But I think I'll just go down to the showers and comb my hair out. Nothing doing. You're going to comb it out right here. There's only room for one beehive in this prison. Barely room for that. <laughs> yes, Mr. Rafferty. Go home. What? Relieved of further duties, leave the cell block immediately. Leave? Am I being fired? Leave! <laughs> no, just wash your hair and take it down a couple of feet. It's obstructing the security cameras. Damn! I wanted to wear it to the movies tonight. I always dreamed of blocking someone's view. <laughs> wow! What a stroke of luck! There's not a guard around. I'm all dressed up with somewhere to go. It's just perfect. It's too perfect, you ninny. <laughs> You're walking into a trap. A ninny trap. <laughs> hey, Pam, come on. Just because life is suddenly fair for two minutes doesn't mean that Eve is walking into a trap. That's right, Dorothy. Here in Oz, wardens dismiss guards just for the hell of it. <laughs> she could be right, Eve. They're making it too easy for you to get to Charlie. I get it. They're gonna follow me to get to him. You should wear your hair like a helmet more often. <laughs> Must keep your brain warm. <laughs> I don't. 
don't care. I've got to see him. But now somebody's got to distract Mr. Rafferty and the FBI guy before the bullets start flying. Huh? Come on, Pam. Whoa. <laughs> Pam and bullets used in the same sentence? Eve is our friend, and she needs us. Pam, how often does one friend get to touch the lives of two human beings in their twilight years? What is this, a Spielberg movie? <laughs> All right, let's go. I owe you one, Pam. Are we having a moment? <laughs> yes. Is it over yet? <laughs> it can be. Good. I don't do moments. Wait! What should I do? You just stay here. If anyone asks you anything, tell them you know nothing. They'll believe you. <laughs> okay, Eve, are you ready? I've been ready 30 years. Excuse me. <gasps> Charlie? Yeah. Which way to the visitor center? Straight ahead. Thanks. Say, weren't you taking a shower earlier? Yes. <laughs> okay. The guards have been instructed to give Eve the right of way. I know he's here. I can smell him. Nah, that's tonight's chip beef. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Sorry to interrupt you gentlemen, but I think you'll be interested in something we have to tell you. I doubt it. Okay. But then we won't tell you what we know about a certain guy named Charlie. What do you know about Charlie? Oh, just when he's getting here and how he's getting here. You know the kind of juicy stuff that's gonna cost you a bundle. Oh, yeah? How do you know that? I'm Eve's best friend. And like everything in this hellhole, friendship has a price. Forget it. We don't bargain for information. Oh, yes, we do. Of course we do. <laughs> Item one, bar to bar carpeting. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we are. Charlie should be finding his way here any minute. I'm so nervous. I feel like a schoolgirl on her first date. But well, don't stay out too late. <laughs> The anniversary, baby cakes. Charlie, you made it. Hey, you think the sorority house they call a prison could keep me away from you? Oh, Charlie, 30 years. I missed you, honey. I'm sorry I'm late, but everyone kept stopping me and complimenting me on my new hairdo. <laughs> what new hairdo? You look just like you did summer of 57. Oh, Charlie, you remembered. <laughs> Item 37B, soap on a rope in all the showers. 37C, water in all the showers. Okay, you two, I get a hunch you're stalling for time. Stalling? Now, why would prisoners in jail stall for time? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they miss being in solitary. Now, if you two have information, I want it. When is Charlie coming? Christmas Eve. <laughs> Actually, he shops for Christmas in July. That's just the kind of craftiness you're dealing with. <laughs> Something's going on. Yeah, and I'm going to find out what it is. I want a location on Eve Shipley. I see. Eve has left the cell block and she was seen proceeding to the visitor center wearing a tall blonde hat. <laughs> Let's go. Listen, they're playing our song. Sam must have found out you're here. Sam, that guy never gives up. He's been after my tail for years. Not only yours. Charlie, you gotta go. Hey. Don't worry about it. And I'm going with you. No, Eve. 
All I can offer you is a life on a run. In fact, that's all I ever did offer you. Maybe I should have married Sam when you had a chance. Charlie, I chose you. I love you. I would have been bored with Sam. I like travel, exotic things, faraway places. Eve, you've been in prison for 30 years. I have a very active fantasy life. <laughs> Come on, Charlie, you gotta go. Just a minute. Happy anniversary, baby cakes. Pearls! You bought these for me? Well, let's just say I acquired them for you. <laughs> but I have nothing for you. Oh, yes, you do. And I'll be back next year to collect. Wait! How will I know you got away? I'll have to shoot out the electrical fence. If the lights flicker, you know I made it. Just keep reading the personals. All right, breathe. Okay. Where's Charlie? I, I... He's hiding in the air there. Wait! Get him. Stop! It's no use, Charlie. They got you. Could I please have a moment to say goodbye to my husband? Look, Charlie, we have no future together. I need security, not a life on the lamb. I'm sorry, Charlie, but the better man won. Okay, time's up, Charlie. Come on out. Oh, wait. Let her finish. <laughs> if things had been different, we might have had a chance. I'm gonna count to three. Will you shut up? <laughs> Let's have a moment. I'll always care for you, Charlie. What? And maybe when I get out, we'll steal some lunch. <laughs> Two. You're a good man, Charlie, but I really love. You. Uh He made it under the fence. Come on. I thought you said the better man won. He did. <laughs> Same time next year, Charlie.
have really grown. Thank you. So has your keychain. Ooh, what you feed it? <laughs> well, you know what a rush it is when your hands take on a life of their own? Yeah, but I sure wouldn't waste it on a keychain. <laughs> hmm, what am I going to do with an eight-foot lanyard? Try wrapping it around your neck again. And again, and again, and again. Mickey! Since your arms are usually strapped behind you, what are you making for the prison craft fair? A mosaic. <laughs> I love mosaics. Oh, how pretty. And what unusual tiles. What are they? Tea. <laughs> Care to kick in? <laughs> What's the ante? Two slopes. Hey, anyone break a 20? <laughs> Hey, your quilt looks really nice. Oh, and what an interesting pattern. Is that Art Deco? No, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> I'm no history buff, but didn't Lincoln have eyes? I knew I forgot something. Full house, nines over fours. That cleans me out. That's a disgusting thought. <laughs> Anyone care to fill the empty seat, Murphy? No, uh-uh, not this girl. No way, no how. How about you, Springer? Me? Yeah, you. Well, might be kind of fun. Why not? Hey, those girls aren't playing for fun. There's some heavy hitters in that game. Oh, what's the harm? They're only playing for cigarettes and pocket change. Yeah, and they'll be blowing smoke in your face as they pocket your change. <laughs> Gloomy Gus. <laughs> Playing. Dealer's choice. Okay. The game is spin em, snap em, snore em. <laughs> it's fun. Everybody gets a three card snore em and three down in their hope chest. To open your hope chest, you have to snap your fingers three times and sing ring rum. <laughs> Five card draw. Annie up. <laughs> Well, 
I don't smoke, but a handcrafted lanyard must be worth at least a pack. A keychain? What good is a keychain in a place with 600 people who can't have keys? Okay, okay. Three lanyards. Play. Those are pretty high stakes. They were going to be sold for charity. They'll go to a good charity, the Make Bando Foundation. And I'm the poster child. <laughs> one pack. I'm in. I'm in. Raise one. Two packs to you, Springer. I don't know about poker, but I think I have a canasta. <laughs> Just bet! Dawn, what should I do with this hand? With this crowd? Count your fingers. I'd like to place a bet. Can I give you my IOU for a thousand lanyards? Yeah, but if you don't pay up, you go to the top of the organ donor list. <laughs> That's two packs and a kidney to you, Sticks. What do you got, Meg? Four kings. Read them and weave. Five aces. You did say deuce is wild. <laughs> Don't move. You're moving. I'm breathing. <laughs> Must you? Pam, if you're only sculpting my head, why are you making me pose like this? Because it hurts you. mind I'm trying to work on my crafts project so am I I'm setting up my grow light my plants weren't doing well in the rec room the inmates kept smoking them you call that a crafts project I've grown better things between my toes <laughs> gardening is as much a craft as sculpting Bonnie only God can make a tree Bonnie, on the other hand, has been made by half the men in Wisconsin. Hi, guys. No, wait. Don't tell me. It's one of the Beatles. I can't work like this. Come on, Bonnie. Grab your bust and come into my cell. Sure. Well, why don't you bring the sculpture? <laughs> How'd the game go? Great. I won $20. I'm sorry to hear that. That's how they hook you, don't you see? You just been bit by the bug. And when that bug bites, it doesn't stop itching till it sucks you dry. That couldn't happen to me. I'm a regular at the delousing tank. <laughs> you are so thick. I'm talking about the gambling bug. Listen. When I first got married, I used to work as a cocktail waitress. And every night we used to have this poker game after hours. And since my husband was working the graveyard shift... Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your husband was working the graveyard shift and you killed him. Don't you see the irony in that? <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> At first, I started betting my tip money, and then it was the grocery money, then the rent money, and then my husband started using me as a punching bag. You sure showed him. <laughs> All because of the bug. That bug sits with you at that card table, and he whispers in your ear, Hey, girl, this is the golden hand. This could be your ticket to Easy Street. Yep, that bug knows just what to say. And when it's bled you dry, it just flaps his wings and flies away. So what's your point? <laughs> Don't gamble. It ruined my life. Look, I'm really sorry you have a problem with it, but I can definitely handle a friendly little game of cards. I know when to quit. Yo, high roller. Poker game tomorrow. Cash only. Great. I mean, if I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> Dawn, which is better, a straight or a flush? A flush. Don't say flush to me in the middle of the night. <laughs> Dawn, tell me.
tell me again, what's a full house? Two hookers and three Johns go to sleep. <laughs> I promise never to play poker again. Please, 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 please. Oh, all right. <sighs> Has anybody ever told you you got the charm of a dripping faucet? <laughs> yes, why? <laughs> you are pathetic. Why don't you just throw your money down the toilet? <laughs> that does it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm in. Don, I really appreciate this. I just want to win a little more spending money. <laughs> You'll be lucky to come away with your shirt. You mean they play strip poker? <laughs> Deal, me in. <laughs> I love strip poker. It's so much fun. I always lose. <laughs> the first thing to learn is to read a poker face. Watch the pupils of her eyes. If the pupils get wider, that means she's got a good hand. Or cataracts. <laughs> but if the pupils get narrow, she's bluffing. Small pupils, big bluff. Big pupils, big hand. Or cataracts. <laughs> if the cards feel hot and sweaty. Ooh. <laughs> it means you've got a nervous dealer. So raise her. Disgusting cards raise the dealer. <laughs> now, I've watched Patty play. She likes to draw to the inside straight. So if she only takes one card, the odds are seven to one against her. Seven to one against an inside straight. <sighs> Styx likes to fold early and wait for a big hand. So, if you're holding queens... Come on, Vicky, pay attention. You got a good hand. And the dealer took one, that means he's going for a straight or a flush. Odds about five to one. Oh. It's five to one already? I never show your cards. Here, I'll play your hand. I'll take three. She'll take one. <laughs> she folds. That's done. You finished your quilt? Let's see. Voila! <laughs> Come on, Eve. Abe Lincoln wearing a derby? The man was president of the United States. He owned more than one hat. <laughs> Eve, it's beautiful. I bet you could get 50 bucks for that at the crafts fair. No way. It's for my mother's birthday. She'll pay twice that. <laughs> Morning, POWs. In your case, that's prisoners of Wisconsin. <laughs> Fidel Castro with the Derby? Works for me. <laughs> okay, wreck time, ladies. Except for Springer, who's about to have her beginner's luck surgically removed. I'm sorry, Meg. We were up all night playing. I'm tired of poker. Cards are no fun if you have to think. <laughs> How about Yahtzee? <laughs> You don't imagine you're going to quit with my money in your pocket. Well, Dawn knows from experience, and she said it's better to quit while you're ahead. That's one opinion. But my opinion, which is armed and dangerous, is play or enjoy all the advantages of handicap parking. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I knew you'd see it my way. <laughs> so get your butt down to Patty cell in two minutes and bring cash. What the heck? I'll play for a little while and then fake a headache. Always worked with my husband. <laughs> what do you think, Eve? She's right. It does look like Fidel Castro. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here are ladies. No help. Possible flush. Possible straight. Oh, well, let's talk to the dealer. Dawn. Let's say we open for five bucks.
think Don has been down there all this time gambling. Vicky, believe me, you can't do anything for her. She's like a junkie. She's like Bernie is with sex. <laughs> At least I turn a profit. <laughs> So there you are, young lady. Hello! Don't smart mouth me. We know where you've been these past three hours. You know where I've been these past three years. You've been gambling. Yeah, and it was the best time I've had since Meg cleaned out a stun gun and gave herself a permanent. If that's your attitude, you leave us no choice. You're grounded. Does that mean I can't use the car? As your friends and cellmates, we cannot let you play poker anymore. Oh, leave her alone, Vicky. You're the one who got us started again. Maybe so, but I'm going to finish it. I'm going to nip this habit in the bud. Hey, nip this, Jane. First of all, it's Vicky. <laughs> Look, I know what I'm doing. Besides, I won. So back off. Talk to her, Eve. John! Love your hair. Do I sense a little tension here? Possibly leading to some good old-fashioned prison violence? Or am I just being a cockeyed optimist? Pam, we have a big problem. Tell her to stop gambling. Stop gambling. Can I borrow your grow light? It's not gonna make you any taller. Well, one thing's obvious, your husband didn't die laughing. I need to dry out my clay. Oh, you're finished. Oh, I'm so excited. My bust is ready for its first public display. After hundreds of private showings. Ta-da! Pam, you're actually good. Close, I'm actually great. <laughs> and here's the best part. <laughs> Did I capture her essence or what? <laughs> this is all quite amusing, but aren't we forgetting we have a serious problem here? Look, you. One more word about gambling, and your smile is going to be part of Wiggy's next mosaic. <laughs> Have you seen my Abe Lincoln around? Your quilt? No. I can't find him anywhere. One minute he's on my bed, the next minute he's gone. Men are such pigs. <laughs> okay, Wiggy, what piece of garbage did you make for this year's crafts fair? A mosaic. Hey, I like it. Real tea? Yes. They should have flossed. <laughs> I'll give you ten bucks for it. Sold. I think I'll call it the Molar Lisa. <laughs> hey, Meg, where'd you get all the disposable income? Well, let's just say my ship came in, the SS Dawn Murphy. <laughs> Dawn? The poker game. It was like Christmas, and Dawn was Santa Claus. Only I was the one going, ho, ho, ho. Dawn said she won. Are you kidding? I couldn't have cleaned her out any better if I had a Q-tip. <laughs> Speak of the pigeons. Poker game in 15 minutes, Santa. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Vicky, can you do me a favor? Can you stake me 20? You told me you won yesterday. I did. Meg said you lost. Okay, so I lost a couple of hands. But I can win. I know I can. I got them exactly where I want them. They think I'm a sap. So can you lend me 20 bucks? No, I will not. All right. I'll have to sell a pint of blood. Aw, oh, Don, you don't want to go and do that. Why not? You'll still have plenty left. <laughs> I can't believe it. Somebody stole Honest Abe. <laughs> what kind of people are in this prison? <laughs> Took Eve's quilt. Uh-uh. If I steal a Lincoln, it's gonna have wheels. <laughs> Your pupils are narrowing. You're bluffing. You lost Eve's quilt gambling. I did not lose it. I know exactly where it is. Dawn. Look, 
All I need is a couple of dollars and a couple of aces to win it back. You need help. I need money. Now you got 20 bucks someplace. You gonna give it to me or not? Not. All right. I'll find it myself. <laughs> Look, I don't need any of your self-righteous speeches. I've been gambling since you were a Girl Scout. So leave me alone and go peddle your cookies someplace else. Leave you alone? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I can see that. I just came here to talk. So talk. Tell me where's the money. There it is. Take the damn money. What the hell is happening to me? Gee, I swear I made my bed this morning. <laughs> my bust. It's busted. Why do I feel like Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> this is all my fault. I couldn't find my purple sweater, and you know how I get when I'm not color coordinated. I, just... I mean this in the nicest possible way. Shut up. I trashed the cell. And I broke the statue. And Eve... I lost your quilt playing poker. I'm sorry. No excuses. I just hit bottom. Can you guys ever forgive me? The no. nuts. <laughs> but I swear I'll find a way to make it up to you I swear you'll find many many ways to make it up to me <laughs> oh Eve uh, this ought to be enough to buy your quilt back I can't believe you could steal my Abe Lincoln and after he freed your people <laughs> Those long, painful hours contorting my body, posing for this. Ooh, I get to do it all again. Hi. <laughs> Guess I got a lot of cleaning up to do. Let me help. Well, I'm the one who sort of got you into this. Yeah, you did. Hey. You clean up this place. <laughs> About that money you gave Eve. Oh, I had to. It was the least I could do. No, you really shouldn't have. Well, it was only right. No, you, know. you really shouldn't have. That was my money you gave her. <laughs> well, uh, let's just say I owe you one. Just say you owe me 20. <laughs> Double or nothing?
in this cruel, crazy world You feel so ashamed You insist you were framed And you cling to your soul And these tearful roads So misunderstood What'd you do? Swim the Chanel? <laughs> Vicky, I think your perfume smells wonderful. Are you gonna wear it to the parole board? Do you think I should? I really want to make a good impression. Absolutely. Do everything you can to win them over. That's how you get an early parole. I've got them all figured out. I've been here 30 years. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going to be so nervous. I can feel a zit coming on. <laughs> You got nothing to worry about. You go in, plead your case, they turn you down. Piece of cake. I believe there's no reason for them to turn me down if I plead my case intelligently and with complete honesty. Well, that's one way. Hey, girls. That's the other way. Do you think this will make the board stand up and take notice? They'll take notice. I don't think they'll be able to stand up. A quintessentially gilt-edged afternoon to you, my felonious, salacious, and scurrilous miscreants. <laughs> Say what? I'm the one who gets to write up your reports for the parole board, so I'm honing up my vocabulary rapier. We're gonna be rapiered, all right. <laughs> sprung for a thesaurus so I could bone up on all the different and exciting ways to say scum. <laughs> so go ahead, rile me, you cowering collection of soppy pusillanimous poltroons. <laughs> Says you, you repugnantly ill-shaped wad of barbaric oozing phlegm. <laughs> hmm. 
you ostentatiously bombastic and sagaciously pretentious ogress whose placement on the scale of human tolerability is somewhere beneath moist toe jam. <laughs> ah, your mother. <laughs> ah, you think that's funny, huh? Surprise inspection. Hey, we had inspection this morning. Let's just say I care. <laughs> Man! Don't be ridiculous. We've been at our jobs all morning. Right. We couldn't possibly have had any time to smuggle anything in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there is that side of beef. <laughs> okay, Murphy. Get this cow back to the kitchen. Then report to Rafferty's office for punitive and draconian castigation. <laughs> Anti-disestablishmentarianism! <laughs> that got her. Wonder why the hell this toaster oven won't work? It's been busted for a week. And I need a tuna melt bad. <laughs> Mr. Rafferty? What is it, Bando? I brought Murphy in for punishment. Why? She stole a side of beef from the kitchen. Which side? <laughs> so should I throw her in the hole, write her up? Kick her out of prison? <laughs> I'm busy here. Go fill out a form or something. <laughs> Vicky, get Meg what she needs. That would be a pair of stilts and a paper bag. <laughs> Okay, Murphy, get back to your cell. When the board reads my report, your parole will be yanked faster than a wisdom tooth tied to a speeding Buick. <laughs> oh, good. That means I get to spend more time with you. Meg, can't you take it easy on Dawn for once? Hey, she stole a side of beef. Sorry. Any relation? <laughs> Uh, Help me! Uh, Meg! Uh, <laughs> call 911. Right, I'm calling. 9 1. What'd you say the other number was again? 2 3 4. Well, make up your mind. Which number is it? <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Well, when you're through there, we're going to have a little talk. Yes, sir, don't think I'm not going to report this. Nuh-uh, you got another thing coming. Yeah, boy. He's breathing. Go for help. When I'm through with Murphy, you're next in line, Missy. Don't you forget it. Meg, for God's sake, I'll get the medic. Okay, resisting arrest. <laughs> You're in trouble now, Springer. Don't worry, sir. We're gonna throw the book at her. I'm here. I'm in control. I'm in charge. Meg? What? What's going on? You electrocuted yourself on the toaster oven, sir. We ran in here and found you out cold and not breathing. And you saved me? Uh. Meg. I owe you my life. Uh. Thank you. Uh. You're welcome. So what's all this? I called the guards so they could congratulate the girl who saved my life. Oh, sir. Meg Bando. Meg? Oh, shucks, sir. Just doing my job. But, but sir, Springer, I... let's go fill out some forms. 
Mr. Rafferty. Hey, I... don't worry. I'm fine. Thanks to Meg. <laughs> You told him you saved his life? No, I didn't tell him. He just assumed. Well, you just march right back in there and unassume him. Ah! <laughs> All right, I'll go. Hold it, Springer. I got to tell you something. When Rafferty woke up and saw me kneeling over him, he had this look on his face that I... I've only seen once before. On Grandpa Henry. <laughs> us after grandma died in a tragic baking accident <laughs> and with him grandpa brought old duke his trusted hunting spaniel <laughs> and duke like grandpa was old and racked with consumption <laughs> one night daddy told us it was time to put old duke out of his misery so we kids all drew straws and i got the short one <laughs> the story of my life. <laughs> and? And so I grabbed my junior 22 pump rifle and I dragged, I dragged Duke out onto the driveway. I kissed his thin and bony skull. I shouldered my weapon and I... <laughs> oh, Meg, I had no idea. When we told Grandpa Duke was gone, he thought we'd shot John Wayne. <laughs> so when did you see that special look on his face? When a tow-headed 12-year-old went to town and came back with a wet-nosed, floppy-eared puppy. You want to know what we named that little rascal? Young Duke? No, Dick. <laughs> so don't you see, Springer? I haven't been appreciated like that by anybody until today. So won't you give me this one, Vicky? Huh? For old Duke? Why don't you tell the truth? You got nothing to be ashamed of. It's not as if you saved Meg's life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, Miss Little Jabberjaws couldn't keep her trap shut. Cal, surprise. I only told my cellmates. Well, I figured you'd blab, so... <whistles> Whoa! There's more where this came from, girls, if you just keep your lips sealed. You know what I mean. Sure I do. You scratch my back, I shave yours. <laughs> You're sweet. Enjoy and bon appetit. Girls, chicken with meat on it. Oh. All right. Oh. Hey, Springer, come here a sec. What? Quick question. You're an idiot. <laughs> Watch closely. This finger represents the truth about who saved Rafferty. This finger represents you. This finger represents tomorrow's parole board and possibly your early release. Okay. Okay. Combine yourself with the truth and you could walk right on out of here with tomorrow's parole board. But take away the truth, take away the parole board, and what's left? <laughs> That's what's happening to me. I could get my sentence reduced. Girls, I've been thinking and you're right. I deserve my proper credit. I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> like hell you will, dead woman. <laughs>
this morning with the Rockefellers. <laughs> Boy, this hero gig is the best. Everyone's congratulating me, shaking my hand. People like me. Go figure. <laughs> we like you. Go figure. <laughs> hey, Don, you know that unflattering report I was going to write about you? Yeah. Sudden case of writer's block. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> and how's Springer, my favorite silent partner? Well, I've been thinking about that incident the other day. Vicky, Meg's a busy, busy woman. <laughs> she doesn't have time for every little problem from every little prisoner. <laughs> Unless it's like a medical emergency. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate your sensitivity to my position. But if Springer has something troubling her, I can find time. Thank you, Meg. It's just that I'm not sure if I want to keep quiet about all this. I see. Eve, drop and give me 20. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be serious. You bet I am. Hit the concrete, old lady. <laughs> Meg, this is crazy. I'm the one you're mad at. You? I wouldn't think of doing anything to you. <sighs> Complaining, huh? Make it 40. <laughs> and count them off. And what are you prisoners doing with all these luxuries? Oh, please, Meg, don't. One! <laughs> okay, it'll take a little getting used to. <laughs> it's sort of a minimalist look. Can it, Springer? How the hell is anybody supposed to live like this? <laughs> Come on, Eve. You can get up now. Meg's gone. Oh! Now you're concerned about us. I am. Look, it's almost time for my parole hearing. You know, I don't understand you guys. Just yesterday you were saying, tell the truth, Vicky, don't help Meg. Well, what happened to that? What happened to your neck? <laughs> Nothing. Yet. <laughs> oh, why didn't you just speak up when it all happened? I was going to, but... Then Meg told me the saddest story about her Grandpa Henry and his old spaniel she had to shoot. <laughs> Excuse me. Was that spaniel's name Old Duke? She told you that story too? No, I just saw it on Disney Channel. <laughs> Haley Mills was brilliant. I'm not as brilliant as Meg was. Old Duke, my ascot. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm late for my appointment. Vicky, are you going to do what's right for you? Or are you going to do what's right for us? I'm going to do what's right. We're screwed. Oh, Vicky. I was going through my belongings and I came across this old leash. It belonged to old Duke. <laughs> it won't work, Meg. I know you stole that old Duke story from a movie. All right, you caught me. But you gotta admit, Haley Mills was brilliant. <laughs> I am going to tell the truth and get out of this hellhole. Oh, come on, Springer. I know you. You're not gonna screw your cellmates. Think about Eve. Her poor little frail arms straining with push-up fatigue? You can't intimidate me. My cellmates got along okay. Before I got here, they'll get along fine after I'm gone. All right, look, maybe that Duke story was a crock, but I had my reasons. You see, the true story was too painful. When that mean hunter came in and shot our pet mother deer... <laughs> Bambi? Everybody's seen Bambi. Have you no shame? All right. All right. Don't you see what this is about? Look at me. I'm not exactly Diane Sawyer. 
I'm a prison guard. And that's all I'll ever be. If you go in there and tell them the truth, they're going to take away the only job I was ever cut out for. Victoria Springer? Be seated, please. Now, Ms. Springer, I understand this is your first appearance before the board. Yes, and I hope it's my last. Not that you're not lovely people. <laughs> yes, I know. Shut up, Vicky. We are here today to determine whether you should qualify for early parole. Is there any reason this should be granted? Okay. I believe I have been a really excellent prisoner and that my file speaks for itself. According to your file, you've been thrown in solitary twice. Oh, that file. Miss <laughs> Springer, we're looking for something more favorable. Perhaps something not in your file? Well, I... I floss regularly. <laughs> no, that's in here. <laughs> Look, Miss Springer... Wait, there is something. You see, what happened was... Uh... Vicky, this is no time to be shy. Speak up. Uh... <laughs> well, obviously, she's too modest, so let me tell you about her. Go on. Okay. This little lady practically runs my office single-handedly. Yes, sir, she is a real lifesaver. Speaking of lifesaver, how about those licks? Did you see that double overtime? <laughs> look, look, the point is, I've had lots of secretaries. But, but this little gal here is the best. She's bright, efficient, pleasant. She types. She files. Sir. Give me a second here. <laughs> Mr. Rafferty. <laughs> Sir. Warden Rafferty, what are you doing? This is official business. <laughs> Take that out and pucker like a man. Hi, guys. Don't you mean, bye, guys? Yeah, get packed. We can't wait to get you out of here. Hold on. The board decided that since I've been to the hole so often, saving Mr. Rafferty's life just cancels out my record, so I'm not going anywhere. Really? Have you seen the infirmary? Wait! <laughs> Shall we play tug of Vicky? You sold us out! Say your prayers, Shiksa. <laughs> I'm out. As much as I enjoy a good prison beating, the truth is, the brat didn't say a word. Rafferty figured it out for himself. How? He recognized my perfume from when he regained consciousness. I'm surprised he didn't pass out again. <laughs> Let's just say I passed the taste test. <laughs> you mean you didn't speak up for yourself? You could have been free. You did that for us. Well, I'm sure each one of you would have done the same for me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Meg. Yes, sir. Remember our agreement? Your partner's on the way down. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. What's the agreement? She has to learn how to do CPR. Why don't you just teach her? The instructor has to be certified. Get your lungs ready, honey.
glad you're here. What happened to your hand? Nothing, sir. Prisoner bit me. Oh, well, I'm sure she had her reasons. Look, Bando, I realize I haven't given my annual inspection in over five years. So uh, I'm coming through next week. Make sure your cells are spotless. I want the floors clean enough to eat off of. Sir, our prisoners aren't that picky. <laughs> but I am. Just keep in mind, Bando, you're up for, and God knows why, a raise. So get it right for once. Any questions? No, sir. Good. Carry on. Oh, and uh, Bando, keep up the good work. <laughs> and stay the hell out of my files. <laughs> Relax, it's just a guy, right? If you want him to notice your hair, comb it down through your cleavage. <laughs> He's not just a guy. He's the most wonderful man I've ever... Terry, I've... Terry, Terry! What's the big deal about him? He's just the sweetest man I've ever met. He gave me the most memorable weekend of my life. Better than the one you spent with the Romanian bobsled team. <laughs> Different. <laughs> Out of the thousand Johns I've been with, Terry's the only one who's treated me like a person. I can't imagine making love to a thousand men. <laughs> you get a second wind. <laughs> Look at this place, it's a dump! Yeah, it's almost like we're being punished. <laughs> Stick a pom-pom in it, Springer. <laughs> You, if this pig's eye isn't spotless, someone's gonna pay. Now, you don't think for one minute it's gonna be my butt in a sling. Uh-uh. Ain't no sling big enough. <laughs> Funny, Murphy. You got me in stitches. Just like you're gonna be in if you don't start cleaning. And that means all of you. You too, Dunsmore. I'm on top of it. <laughs> the rest of you take a lesson. Oh, come on, Meg. Lighten up. We're working on it. Oh, really? Well, then you won't mind a quickie inspection. <laughs> Oil tanker, go down on your bunk, Bonnie. Meg, tell Harper her visitor's here. Roger. All right, you guys clean up this cell and I'll take out the trash. Come on, Bonnie. <laughs> Good help is so hard to find. <laughs> Your visitor's over there. My money's on bachelor number three. <laughs> Bonnie, you look nice. Oh, thanks, Terry. It was so great of you to come visit. Oh, wow. Bonnie, you look... Nice. Uh, I mean, you really look... Nice? Yeah. So, how did you find me? Well, I drove by your old office. The ready teller machine? That street corner isn't the same without you. I bet you say that to all the hookers. You're my one and only. Didn't you read my postcards? Are you kidding? I saved them all. They were so poetic. So romantic. Yeah, so was the guy who wrote them for me. <laughs> you know, he writes the ship's menus. Boy, he can really turn a phrase. I'll say. I long to taste the souffle of your lips. <laughs> I hunger for your shapely, milk-fed calves. <laughs> My favorite was... The gentle curve of your rump roast. And I meant every word he said. All right, visiting hours are over. Finish your sentence so Bonnie can finish hers. Wait, Bonnie, there's one more thing. Do you mind? No problem. I'll just work on my taxes. <laughs> I've made lieutenant, junior grade, and I'll be stationed not too far from Wisconsin. Really? Where? San Diego. I hope 
hope he's not the ship's navigator. As long as I'm planning for my future, I want you to be part of it. Terry! That's a diamond ring. Bonnie, you're the first girl I ever slept with and the only girl I've ever loved. <laughs> Will you marry me? This is so unexpected. I don't know what to say. Say goodbye to Popeye. Visiting hours are over. <laughs> Think it over. I'll be back tomorrow. Excuse me. Couldn't help but overhearing you. Uh, you know she's a whore, right? <laughs> and they let her be a guard? <laughs> so pretty. Wow. Look at her diamond. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so what'd you do with the Cracker Jacks? <laughs> so, Barney, when's the wedding? Hey, not so fast. I don't even know if I'm going to say yes. We know you can't say no. <laughs> what I mean is, I don't know. Marriage is so sacred. Marriage is so stupid. We'll have a stupid wedding, live in a stupid house, have stupid kids, and live stupidly ever after. That's kind of cynical. I thoroughly enjoyed being a wife. Granted, Philip did steal all my money, and true, he did cheat on me with not only my dearest friends, but also certain members of my family. But hey, marriage is a give-and-take proposition, right? You know? When Charlie proposed to me, he showered me with money. He put way too much dynamite under that safe. <laughs> stupid women, stupid choices. Look, I'd love to settle down, but I'm afraid every time we walk into a room and I say hello to somebody, Terry will think I've slept with him. Tell him he's better. <laughs> they all love to hear that. <laughs> Terry's just too sweet. I can't marry him. You and that outfit ought to be against the law. We were. Are you as excited about getting married as I am? Terry, I'm not so sure about this. Look, before you decide, there's someone here I'd like you to meet. Bonnie, this is Mom and Dad. Your parents? Hello, Bonnie. This is really weird. I've never met a John's father before. <laughs> Unless he was a referral. Is this your caution? <laughs> and some looker, too, huh, Dad? She seems quite lovely, dear. Of course, I haven't met many prostitutes. <laughs> Neither have I. Look, about that. How can I say this delicately? I really like sex. <laughs> it's the one thing I'm actually good at. <laughs> well, hell, that's why I married Martha. <laughs> Look, Bonnie, the point is, like any parent, we only want what's best for our son. And someday, God willing, our grandchildren. Aww. <laughs> Listen, I love this woman, and I'm going to marry her. Look, if you feel that way, son, and if she feels the same way about you, then your mother and I would never stand in your way. Really, Mom? You heard your father. You mean it's okay I'm a hooker? Uh-huh. And that I'm in prison? Uh-huh. And that I'm a Catholic? Uh-huh. We'll work it out. Bonnie, Terry, we give you our blessing. You really mean that? So, what do you say? I say, I do. Really? <laughs> Ray, she's Catholic.
the power vested in me by the penal system of the state of Wisconsin, I now pronounce you mop and wife. Weddings are so beautiful. You may kiss the utensil. Do you have to call it that? We're trying to pretend it's Terry. I don't have a problem with that. It's Bonnie wearing white that stretches the imagination. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a bat mitzvah on death row. Okay. Toss the bouquet. You gotta be kidding. Oh, come on, Don. You're gonna get out of here one of these days. Don't you think you'd like to get married again? Me? Married? After I killed my first husband? <laughs> Maybe. You want me to let you in on a little secret? I'd get married again. No. no. <laughs> Not to Philip, of course. Unless he changed his ways? Yes. <laughs> Have you thought about where you want to go on your honeymoon after you get out? Oh, I'm not worried about the wedding night. I could do that blindfolded. In fact, I have. <laughs> I mean, I've had the endless nights of wild and crazy animal passion rolling around hot and sweaty on black satin sheets. Me too. <laughs> I just want to live the life I've always fantasized about. The house with the little picket fence. The little league games, the PTA meetings, falling asleep in his arms to Johnny Carson's monologue. going you sank two Iranian tankers <laughs> oh Terry I'm so proud of you <laughs> I love you too mm -hmm. bye <laughs> You busy? Oh, it's my neighbors and best friends, Madge and Midge. Hello, girls. What's up? Oh, Bonnie, you don't want to know. But they'll tell me. <laughs> I came home and found my husband in bed with someone. Oh, my gosh. Who was it? My husband. <gasps> oh, Bonnie, what are we going to do? This calls for a cup of my wonderful coffee. <laughs> How do you take it? With vodka. <laughs> oh, Bonnie, your life is so perfect. Your house is spotless, your children are delightful, and your husband is straight. <laughs> What's your secret? A little laugh, a little decaf, and a little housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mrs. B. I just had the best snooze. Your massage really relaxed me. Massage your housekeeper? Actually, I was just cleaning her. Well, I've got to go catch my bus. Here's my ironing. I'll pick it up next week. Light start. <laughs> Little Terry Jr.'s teacher. I wanted to tell you personally. Your son's test scores were so high, they've raised the national average. <laughs> we're just going to have to enroll him at Harvard and Yale. My son in college. I know not every third grader can handle the Ivy League, but we think little Terry Jr is special. <laughs> Hello. 
This cell is immaculate. What did you threaten him with, Meg? Nothing, sir. I guess they see me as a mother figure. <laughs> of course they do. We're dealing with some warped childhoods here. <laughs> well, you, you should be proud of yourselves, ladies. We'd really like to take all the credit, sir, but the truth is Bonnie cleaned this place all by herself. Bonnie? B Bonnie Harper? The girl who's made everything in a bed except a bed? Where is she? Last time I saw her, she was in the kitchen baking banana raisin bread. But right now, she's probably making slip covers for the electric chair. What the hell's going on here? Want to hear a gut ripper? The bimbo wants to be a bride, sir. <laughs> she's found a wonderful guy, sir. The impression we get is, this is the real thing. Oh, brother. When are they planning to tie the noose? They want to get married before Terry ships out, so you will give them your permission, won't you? Please? No. Look, she's either a hooker trying to use this guy, or he's a pimp trying to use her. What's wrong with a two-income family? Why don't you just meet him and see them together? He'll be here today around 4.30. Wait till you get a look at this geek. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll meet with him. <laughs> but I'll tell you this right now, I ain't gonna like him. <laughs> so the pirate says to the parrot, can I just do it till I need an eye patch? <laughs> <laughs> I love semen humor. <laughs> uh, look, just so you uh, <clears throat> understand, I'm... I'm kind of like a father to these girls. Not that I'd have any of them in my family. I just, I just want to make sure you're on the level and you're going to treat Bonnie right. Oh, on my honor as an officer and a gentleman, sir, I love her. Will you approve of the marriage? Well, let's see. You two have something in common. You've had a lot of men under you. <laughs> so has she. <laughs> Should work out. Bonnie. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I got so caught up cooking and cleaning and going through magazines. I think we should do our kitchen in earth tones. You don't like earth tones? I don't even know what earth tones are. <laughs> Terry, what's wrong? Nothing, really. You sure? You had the same look on your face the first time I told you my price. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, it's, it, it's how you're dressed. I thought you'd like this. You're kidding. You look like a housewife. So? What's wrong with that? The other day you were talking about our house and our kids playing in the front yard. No, Bonnie, my mom talked about all that stuff, not me. Gee, Terry, I thought that was what you wanted. What I want is the sex kit and I fell in love with. Hey, look, why don't you go back and change into that low-cut thing, okay? more like it? Yes. <laughs> that makes it unanimous. Let me see if I understand this. What you want for a wife is an on-call call girl. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. But what I want is to be a regular wife. To love, honor, and sleep in a flannel nighty once in a while. <laughs> what's wrong with that? Bonnie, you're taking all the romance out of this. Look, that's not what I want in a wife. You don't want a wife. You want an inflatable doll. <laughs> so long, sailor. Wait a minute. If you were going to break up with me, why'd you change back into that outfit? When you're out in the middle of the ocean with a thousand men, I want you to remember what you threw overboard.
You okay, kid? No. You did the right thing, you know. I know. Bonnie, you got class. You gave him back his ring and kept your dignity. No. I gave him back his ring and kept the stone. <laughs>